Manga Wido. My name is Misako. I work at a local supermarket. Welcome! We hold daily sales items and the workplace is energetic and fun. But there is this one guy who is always making complaints. This guy, who's in his 60s, started frequenting the supermarket about a year ago. Not sure if he's a retiree or what, but every time he comes in... Why is this more damn price and this is not? It's on the same shelf! It's on the same shelf! Make it the same price for God's sake! It's always the same. Gets all worked up over nothing. His manners are also simply awful. He leaves a frozen meat package on another shelf or pokes and feels fruit and fresh foods with his hands to check to see if they're ripe. Oh, please, sir! Okay, now let me see. Is this really fresh? Whenever he comes in, the staff keep a close eye on him and are ready to take appropriate measures. I remember when masks and toilet paper were short. That was really exasperating. Come on, give them masks! You should really give priority to seniors! Please, sir, come this way! It came down to the store manager calling this old guy to the back of the room and informing him that he's no longer welcome at the store. But the store manager was young and a novice, and couldn't quite handle the old man. What? Banned from the supermarket? If you do that, I'm gonna sue and you'll be out of a job! The old man shot back with so much force that the manager gave up on the ban. I am so sorry, sir. Well, this ended up giving the guy more confidence, and he started acting even more belligerent, shooing other customers aside when in his way. We started to get many complaints demanding that something be done about that old geezer. Get out of my way! Because of the old man's antics, part-timers began quitting, and the work shift started to suffer. Both part-timers as well as full-time staff were at the limit. Are you really gonna quit? <laughs> I just can't take it anymore! Then, one day, an incident that really irked the old geezer occurred. A fee had been placed on shopping bags. A sign announcing this change was placed in the store for all to see at least one month prior. Although there were some minor complaints. Sorry, but there is a slight fee for a shopping bag. Yes, of course, no problem. It was decided by the government, so everyone was okay with that. Except one old fuddy-duddy. What? Pay for something that's always been free? No way! Well, okay. Could you just take this home without a bag? How do you expect me to carry all this without a bag? What are you, daft? Right back at you, old fogey, is what I wanted to say but I patiently listened to the old guy who was adamant about not paying for the shopping bag. But today was a sales day, and behind the old man there was a big long line. I was on the verge of tears with the geezer being adamant and the impatient dagger-like eyes of the people in line. Then a woman in line says, Come on, hurry it up! I'll give you this shopping bag! The old man grumbled, but accepted the bag and sauntered off. I thanked the woman and hurriedly opened the register. Please hurry up and ban this old geezer from coming to the store or have him move away. Far away. That's what I was hoping, but that of course would never come to pass, as he soon appeared again. And what's worse, he lined up at the register where a new part-timer was. I wanted to give her support, but my line was fully packed and could do nothing about it. I don't need no stinking bag. No, just leave it as it is. But I don't want to be called a thief, so I want you to put tape on each and every one of the items. I could see that the young part-timer was shivering with fear, but the other staff members were too busy to help her. And to make things worse, probably on purpose, all the items were little things such as gum, candy, and there must have been at least 20 items on the counter. Come on, speed it up! Man, if you just had a bag, you could just throw it all in and be done with it. It's all your fault for putting a price on shopping bags! Come on, put them stickers on! That poor part-time girl was on the verge of tears. I just can't stand it anymore! I was super pissed and took the store microphone in my hand. Today, there was someone in the store that would change things. Managing Director, assistance at Register 1! As I said that into the mic, the entire store went silent. That's because people were not used to hearing the words, managing director coming over the store speakers. Then, a competent-looking middle-aged man appeared. 
All the customers seemed elated and were like, Oh, it's been a while, sir. Understandable, because this guy used to be the manager of this store up until about three years ago. Because the current manager is on an extended holiday, the former store manager and the current managing director came in to help out. He's the complete opposite of the current novice and weak manager. He's got a stern expression and a seriousness about them that when I first met him, I was even a bit scared. But despite his looks, he is very considerate, stepping in for other workers or handing out candy to the kids. <laughs> oh, Mr. Director. He had already heard stories about this old geezer complainer, and he stood in front of the cowering girl as if to protect her. I'm sorry, sir, is there a problem here? As soon as the old fogey saw the expression on the managing director's face, all enthusiasm drained from his face. Huh? Are you for real? Why are you here? Ah, so the complainer is you, Mr. Tamora. It turned out that the complainer and the managing director were acquainted. The staff and members were really having a hard time with you, I hear. And this little commotion you've caused here is honestly obstruction of business. Uh, I... Please, no! I didn't mean anything by it! Just a little staff training! Staff training? What you are doing is simply just harassment. If you cannot even show the basic manner of society, please never come to the store again. Please leave at once! With that, the customers were elated and slowly little clapping sounds could be heard and rose to a crescendo. Even some of the staff were crying and clapping. Proof that the old geezer was a burden on all of us. It looked like the old guy wanted to say something, but we stared him down and he slinked away. Even the customer got in on the act, yelling, Yeah, get out of here, and don't ever come back! Red-faced, he gathered up his shopping items and dashed off like a frightened cat. We learned later that they knew each other through Go. The managing director was apparently the head of the local Go club. By all accounts, the old guy got fired from his company and was looking for work through his Go buddies but he hasn't shown up at the club and nobody was sure what he was doing. By the accounts of a rumor-loving customer, he got divorced some years back and is living a lonely life all alone. Guess his prospects for a new job are also not looking very good. There are not many small, accessible supermarkets around here, so I hear he's frequenting a high-end supermarket near the train station, but to have to spend money on expensive items must be pretty hard on him. I heard someone say he looks like he lost considerable weight and now looks like a skeleton. But I guess he brought it on himself. Huh? Is that Mr. Tamura? With the old guy no longer frequenting the place, the workplace is much brighter and energetic. It's all thanks to the managing director. Hope to continue working in this kind of environment. Hi, I'm Koji. My older brother Kasuma was super smart since he was just a kid and he could apparently do calculations when he was two years old. He was a child prodigy. But me, I'm just a normal average kid. Cosimo was able to do it when he was two years old. He could do it, why can't you? My mom would sometimes go off on me like that. After a while, my mom just kind of gave up on me and let my grandmother, who lived nearby, take care of me. I gradually became grandma's kid, and at about the same time, my mom started SNS. She would just boast about my brother's test results and overall scores. But then some followers started praising her son as a genius, and especially praising the mother who brought her son up so wonderfully. She got carried away with it and started calling herself an education consultant and passing herself off as some sort of educational professional. Oh, some of my followers want me to upload some of the teaching material I have. Some of them want me to upload Cosmo's impressions, so maybe I should get to work putting them up. And that's how it went. She was so into SNS that she just ignored all housework. My grandma and I ended up doing all the housework and cooking. But she made sure that Kazuma's meals were prepared by herself, using hashtags such as hashtag how to make meals for prodigies and the like. So at the dinner table, we had the average grandma meals, and then my brother's nutritious, well-balanced, calorie-considered meals lined up on the dinner table. My brother would occasionally say he wanted to eat Japanese food, but would be criticized, saying that eating such unhealthy food would make you dumb, which would sometimes end up in heated arguments. In order not to anger my mom, my brother gradually became quiet and soft-spoken. Although I was just a kid, I kind of felt sorry for him. Well, the days went by and I eventually entered high school. 
Around this time, I had long not talked much with my mother. She was just too busy making his meals or driving him to school that it was not even a flicker in her eye. But deep inside, she's still my mom. I feel like saying, look at me too. One day, an incident occurred in which she did notice. It was when I happened to get a glimpse of my grandma's smartphone. What the hell is this picture? It was my mom's SNS photo. It said, today is family day. Spent quite a bit just for today. The date was on the same day she said was a school day. It showed the two of them at a luxury hotel having an expensive dinner. Apparently, she had left my grandma and me behind and took a luxurious trip with just my older brother. So, I'm not even part of the family anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. My parents wanted me to go on to college, but I decided to look for work. Luckily, my teacher was pretty helpful and found me a live-in job. So, after I graduated from high school, I left home. The dorm I was living in was pretty small, but as long as I was not able to see my mom, I was okay with it. Oh, yeah, when I left home, my mom didn't say anything. Her SNS also said she only had one son, and I remember whenever she took a photo, she went out of her way to exclude me. She's probably glad that I left anyways. In order to sweep away that feeling of anxiety concerning my mom, I immersed myself in my work. Because of my hard work, the boss invited me to his home and treated me to dinner. He even shared food with me. One day, the boss's daughter, Reiko, brought me some vegetables. My dad said to bring them over to you. If you can use them, please enjoy them. Thank you. Always appreciated. Hey, that cap! Are you a baseball fan? Yes, I am. Are you a fan too, Rico? Seeing her look so lovingly towards the cap, I sort of fell in love with her right on the spot. We really got into talking about baseball, and after a month or so, we started dating. And then about a year later, I proposed to her. Around this time, I was not even thinking about my mom anymore and just looked forward to living my own life going forward. But I guess if I'm going to get married, no way I could ignore my parents, so I gave them a call. My dad and grandma were super happy, but my mom didn't seem to show much interest. According to my dad, my brother was currently a graduate student. She's constantly looking after him. Uh, well, I suppose I can just go to meet everyone. But make it on a day that Cosima is off, would you? When he's at school, I have to deliver his lunch. I was a bit angry by her reaction, but I didn't want my marriage to fizzle out, so I set up a date for the meeting. Despite my mom being my mom, she didn't act too obnoxiously given the circumstances. Everything seemed to be going smoothly, and I felt a bit relieved. Then at the end, Reiko's sister wanted to take a picture with everyone. I felt really relieved and felt a huge load off my shoulders. But that was not the end of the story. A few days after our meeting, I got a call from my mom. What have you done? Now everyone knows! I was not really sure what she was talking about, so I talked to my dad and he explained. I was flabbergasted. Seems that Reiko's sister uploaded the photo to SNS. One of her followers apparently was a fervent SNS follower and asked why she had a younger son and that she thought Kazuma was the only son. Evidently, the follower accused her of highlighting her elder son and keeping the younger son secret, lying to her followers. And when they checked on me, they found that I was an average kid who went to an average high school. No genius like my brother. That follower shared her info with others and it spread like wildfire. I checked out the SNS too and people were saying how bad a mother she was for not bringing up the two kids equally and that she was a liar. To be honest, I was like, you got that right. I was rooting for all the scathing criticism. Do something, would you? It's all your fault! My mom was so adamant that I did what I could. I wrote, I am the younger brother. I'm sorry that I caused so much turmoil. My mom shunned me long ago and I left home and worked. I'm living alone now and doing well. Because I left home, I was able to meet a beautiful woman whom I hope to marry. So my mom's policy of shunning an average no prospect son had its merits. Wow, the comment storm was nonstop after I uploaded mine. All the comments were sympathetic to me and critical of how my mom treated me. Frankly, my laughter would not stop. In the end, she was unable to stop the negative aspects of her SNS and just up and quit. She was going to make the blog into a book, but that all went down the drain. Straight up, I was kind of elated. 
SNS was her whole life, so she really got depressed after that and never contacted me again. Luck would have it that I was able to get married and now living happily with my new bride. I was afraid she might do something crazy, so I didn't tell her my address. Oh yeah, about my brother. He took the opportunity of my mother being out of the picture and left home and hooked up with his girlfriend. My mom was so enamored with my older brother that now that he was gone, she was like a zombie wandering around the house. According to my grandma, she apparently resembles a skeleton. Self-inflicted outcome. We brothers were able to escape our obsessive mother and now we'll live our lives to the fullest. I'm Aya Yoshimura, 29 years old and single. I work at a wedding ceremony company. It's a fairly big company that even has a dormitory for both men and women employees. But, sad to say, there are no real prospects for me. If truth be told, I am pretty plain and boring. Now, 25-year-old Moe Nakajima is the complete opposite of me. Among the staff members, she is a standout beauty. She can do her job well and is a competent junior staff member. There is one problem, though. She's good at sweet-talking people when she wants something. <laughs> Miss Aya, you always seem to create more work for all of us. <laughs> I'm usually just a little clumsier than most, but she will find fault with it and drag it out. Because she's bright and outspoken, the other staff members tend to follow her. Yeah, exactly! Yoshimura's been here a long time, but never seems to get things right. If you want to be friends with Moe, well, the easiest way would be to dump on Aya. Nobody says it outright, but that's how it feels around the workplace. Moe would continue with her hounding me. The tormenting and bullying just seemed to increase as time went by. I am pretty quiet and never really said anything. Moe, on the other hand, was able to do her job, and her private life was also very flashy. She would go to night pool parties and go camping with her friends from her college days. She's got a load of friends, too, with her SNS contacts overflowing. There are a lot of girls in the dorm who say that Moe introduced them to various guys. Then, one day, there was talk of Moe getting married. I hear that he's an elite salesman at some foreign corporation. Wow, can't put it past her. Did you already get your invite? Yeah, I got mine. I have to make sure to make a reservation at the beauty parlor. All the girls at the office got an invite, but me. When she first came to the company, I taught her about everything she knows. Nobody else helped. I happened to hear her talking about why she didn't invite me when she was talking to another staff member. Yeah, you know, she seems so dark, you know, thought it would bring me bad luck. I could hear the raucous laughter coming from the locker room. After accidentally hearing the heartless comments coming from the locker room, I walked home crying. I could never go up against such an energetic and high-tension person as Moe, but that's the type of person who can find a comfortable spot at the company. I was gradually feeling as if I was not wanted. Trouble began right away. It was on the day of Moe's wedding. I was on my way back to the dorm one evening after finishing some errands. Moe? Moe was laying on the ground in front of the dorm wearing a sparkling wedding dress. What the hell is going on here? What happened? Various negative scenarios raced through my mind. Was there some big accident at the wedding hall? Was the place attacked by terrorists? Something horrible must have occurred. She came all the way back to the dorm on her wedding day. What could it be? Normally, I would be really irritated with her, but seeing her in this predicament, I honestly felt sorry for her and had to help. It was then that Moe uttered a moan and opened her eyes. Uh, I, uh, what are you doing here? Hey, Moe, are you okay? You're at the company dorm. I see you, uh, you seem like you're pretty drunk. I was somehow able to get her up to my room. After drinking a glass of water, she was finally able to speak up. I was a bit taken aback by why she ended up here. Your ex-boyfriend took you away from the wedding ceremony? She just laughed and acknowledged the fact. <laughs> the ceremony was going really well, but then my ex arrived and took me away with him. What? This isn't some cartoon or TV drama for God's sake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't you think? It was really like a TV drama. I was kind of excited, to be honest. 
Apparently, she put up no resistance and just let him take her away. Unlike her, I couldn't just laugh the whole thing off. Looks like the wedding ceremony was a complete disaster. But I mean, it's self-inflicted, isn't it? I wonder what happened to the relatives and all the friends that attended. They must be worried sick about her, probably calling everywhere about her whereabouts. I was starting to get very irritated at her, just sitting there giggling like a schoolgirl. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. What I just told you is a secret, so don't mention it to anybody, okay? Secret? Well, I was taken away by him, and it kind of went along. We got to the hotel, and then we had a big argument. A big argument? Yeah, he was saying stuff like me not going out with other guys and really hassling me, and I just got fed up. Apparently, they were both drinking, and gradually, things got heated. Evidently, she was drunk and had nowhere else to go, so she headed back to the dorm, hoping someone would let her stay over. I'm so glad I split up with him. You know, I'm gonna marry my current boyfriend. It looks like I was taken away against my will, so it's not my fault. And I can fool everyone. Listening to her, my patience reached its limits. Is that so? Okay, then. I just mailed this. Right then, her expression suddenly changed. What? You did what? Oh, did you mail it? This is what I sent earlier. Moe is at the dorm. Apparently, she was swept away by her ex-boyfriend and taken to a hotel. They got into a fight, and she came here to the dorm. Moe was pretty upset, obviously. What? Why? Oh, what are you going to do about it? Oh, sorry. I guess I was just being clumsy, as usual. This marriage fizzles. It's all your fault. Hope it all ends with just that. Come on, get going. You're going to have to explain all this to everyone. I mean, being with me will only decrease your fortunes, right? I showed her out of my dorm room in her wedding gown as she banged on my door. She yelled for help, saying she was sorry and all, but I ignored her pleas. So it goes, I guess. Somehow, I feel relieved. I have no obligation to take care of this ungrateful co-worker. Well, as everyone expected, her marriage fizzled out. She was pretty depressed that she lost a potential husband and top-level company elite. Nobody at the company tried to console or cared how she felt. Friend and company higher-ups were disappointed and annoyed by her conduct. That previous popularity went out the window, and everybody started ignoring her. Moe eventually had nowhere else to turn, but a bit different from how I felt. When she quit the company, there was not even a farewell party for her. Well, it's no wonder. I mean, completely trashing everyone's trust will do that. After Moe's departure, my presence at the company gradually started to get back to normal. We plan to go to a beer garden party with everyone at the office. Bet the conversation will center around Moe's antics. I heard from friends that Moe had returned to her hometown and was currently a mistress to some local rich guy twice her age. Well, even after she is gone, she left us some really juicy stories to talk about. <laughs> what a great former employee! My name is Mommy. I don't have a mother. I live with my grandpa and my dad, whose name is Sugio. My parents got divorced when I was a lot younger. I was told... Your mother ran off with a different man and left us. And my dad. I hated my mother for it, and I spent many nights crying over her. But at the end of the day, I wasn't alone. I had my dad and my grandpa there to support me. Some of my friends were even jealous. Mommy, your dad is always home, right? I wish mine was too. Usually, dads are supposed to be out working, I guess. Sometimes, I wonder what dad does for work. I got curious about his job, but the fact that he was always home and by my side was good enough for me. However, our happy life came to an abrupt end. Grandpa! My grandfather had a stroke. The doctors were able to save his life, but his spine and legs were damaged and he was confined to bed. Mommy, can you prepare Grandpa's meal? Dad wasn't so good at the housework, and he often asked me to take care of Grandpa. I did everything I could do, but I was a child. There was only so many things I could handle. Grandpa kept getting weaker every day. At times, I wish Mom was here. I missed her. But at the same time, we're suffering so much right now because she left us for another man. I hated her guts. About a year had passed, and... I'm sorry for your loss. Grandpa passed away quietly at home. 
We were crushed because we had continued to hope for his recovery. I couldn't help but feel that we weren't able to care for Grandpa well enough because my mom had left. The day of the funeral, my dad and I were giving Grandpa our last words. Yo, Suguo! Finally, that irresponsible jerk is gone. I heard his last days were pathetic and miserable. He deserved it, though, after all he did, huh? A man I had never met suddenly started talking to my dad. How dare he! I had no idea who he was, but I was furious. Who was he to come barging in to insult my dead grandfather? I guess you'll end up the same since your wife left you and have a miserable life. You! Don't worry, your ex-wife is living a happy, fulfilled life with me. She seems a lot happier than when she lived with you. This guy's the man my mother had an affair with? What are you doing here, you wife-stealing jerk? I didn't steal her, Suguo. She just left you. But I mean, who wouldn't after what you did, bro? Bro? Wait, this man is Dad's brother? What does he mean by threw away? Why did my mom leave Dad? The man turned to me and spoke to me in a gentle voice. Mommy, forgive my behavior. I just can't forgive your grandfather and your father. I, well, we came to pick you up. Huh? What? What do you mean? Just as my dad opened his mouth, a woman appeared from behind him. Mommy. N nana I can't believe you came. The woman who called my name was a woman who left us years ago. It was mom. What do you mean you came to pick me up? You threw me away like trash. What do you want from me? That's not what happened. Your mother never threw you away. Hey, stop trying to trick her. Oh, mommy, please hear us out. I wanted to know what he had to say, but at the same time, I was scared. My heart started racing. Suguo is not your actual father. You, you are your grandfather's child. Grandpa is my real father? I felt faint. I didn't know how to handle the shocking information. This is what the man told me. My grandfather cheated on my grandmother many times while she was healthy. Even after she died, he kept having sexual relationships with many women until one of them got pregnant. She didn't want the baby, so she left and disappeared after I was born. My grandfather was not the responsible type. He couldn't handle the load. Nana, who's my mom, heard about me and decided to raise me as her child. She had always wanted a child, but she was not blessed with a baby no matter how hard she had tried. Around the same time, Sugio was fired and lost his job. He spent his days at home being useless. He didn't even try to find a new job, and he lived off of the money my mom earned. He would sometimes even yell at my mom for not making enough money. My mother was physically and emotionally worn out. That's when Tadashi, Sugio's brother, came to help my mom out. He was worried about her. He owned a small company and offered my mom a job which guaranteed a steady income. She would also go for him for help and advice. However... You're filthy! You're having an affair with Tadashi, aren't you? Who do you think I am? Sugio kept accusing them. He was raging with jealousy. He was completely blind to his own faults and kept accusing them of having an affair. He forced Nana to cut all ties to him and drove her away. Nana tried to take me with her when she left the house, but... You are the only one leaving. Mommy is related to me by blood. You have no right to take her. All you need to do is give us payments monthly so we have enough money to raise Mommy. If you don't, I'll make you regret it. I was shocked to find out the truth. I deserve that money! I'm raising a kid that's not even mine! You said you wanted to take her with you. That's how much you love her, right? Then why do you have a problem with paying me every month to raise her? But I finally understood why my dad never worked. He would always just be at home. These people had supported us every month, while dad just sat around. So, do you understand now? This is the true face of the man you've been living with. I won't let you take her! How will I get any money if she's gone? I was astounded. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. All of my strength seemed to drain out of me and I almost fainted. Nana swooped in and saved me from falling, and she held me close. Mommy, I'm so sorry for everything. I wanted to tell you I love you for so long. We can live together, if that's something you're willing to consider. Nana may not be your mother by blood, but I guarantee that her love for you is there. She cares for you so much. The man who thinks I'm his money tree, or the woman holding me so gently right now. It wasn't a difficult decision. Dad, er, Mr. Sugio, I want to live with Nana. Are you kidding me? You ungrateful brat! Sugio, 
I'm ready to fight if you take this any further. Don't forget that you need to pay Nana back. We're willing to go to court if you don't. This was the last conversation we had with this man. I am now living a very happy life with my wonderful new family. Nana showers me with love every single day, and I feel so blessed to be with somebody who is so loving and caring. Sugio, on the other hand, stays inside the house every day. Now that he's lost me, his money tree, he's struggling to live by every day. He still calls from time to time to ask Nana for money. Obviously, she says no. That's what he gets for calling me his money tree. He spent years living a good life off of Nana's money. I guess he deserves everything he's going through right now. However, I'm aware that he is the one who raised me for years. I hope he'll have a change of heart and realize what he did so he can live a proper life from here. My name is Mao. I am plain and ordinary, unlike my sister Kaede. My parents always loved Kaede more than me, and it was quite obvious. They would buy my sister an expensive purse for her birthday, and I would end up with three school pencils. Luckily, my grandparents lived nearby, and they always cared for me. Thanks to them, I wasn't so lonely. As I got older, I began to realize I was better off having my parents ogling over my sister. When she entered a junior beauty pageant and won, my parents immediately began preparing to put her in the entertainment industry. Keep your skin white. You don't need to go outside and get all sunburned. Kaede, you're not allowed to leave the house. You stay inside at all times. Kaede wasn't allowed to play outside with other kids. She was forced to attend acting classes five times a week to become an actress. She listened to them because she knew defying their orders would cause more pain. However, my sister was always timid. She couldn't stand out in show business. She never became successful. After she turned 20, she quit acting school. And I remember she looked so relieved. Now I can live a normal life. I still remember her exact words. However, the normal life she wanted never happened to her. My parents couldn't give up on their dream, and they would take Kaede out into the city to see if any scouts would notice her. By that time, my grandparents had passed away, and I spent a lot of time at home, alone. I had a lot of freedom, so it's not like I was unhappy. It was better than my sister's life. I graduated school and started working at a supermarket as a contract worker. No, you won't believe this. Mom paid this cow $50,000. What? All you need to do is pay for the professional training and we promise to make your daughter famous. We have connections to TV stations all around. She will become huge. My mom was moved by the speech and paid $50,000 only to find out that she was tricked. We were in debt and in big trouble. Give us all of your money! We need it to survive! I'm still paying my student loans from the money I work hard for! I can't just give it all to you! Hey! You owe us for raising you all these years! My father had quit his job to become my sister's manager, so I was the only one with a job and a steady income. One day, my parents kept strolling to the living room with big smiles on their face. We found someone willing to buy Grandma's land! That's strange. Nobody wanted to buy it before. Where did they find a buyer? I was feeling uneasy, so I tagged along on the day of the contract. The man who came was a scary, heavy man. He had brought another shady man who claimed to be a judicial scrivener. So, let's get on with it. I would like to buy your land for $50,000. Yes, of course! Hold on, $50,000, huh? I'd like to raise the price a little more. That's not fair. The land is practically useless. 50000 seems fair. While my father started negotiating the price of the land, Kaede poked me and told me to go out into the hallway. I've seen that guy before. He's been going in and out of that shady warehouse across the river. Oh, that's the one the neighbors have been talking about, right? Yeah, there are rumors that illegal activity has been going on in there. Are they trying to do something illegal with the land they're buying from us? We can't allow them to sell the land Grandma left for us to criminals. I rushed into the living room to stop the process, only to find that... How about you take our daughter with you? We promise you she will work hard for you and your men. Yes, that's a fantastic idea. She doesn't have a wedding ring on, so you can have her as your wife. Does $20,000 sound good to you? What? My parents were trying to sell me along with the land. Hmm. Okay, then. I guess we can finalize the contract. $70,000 for the land and your daughter. The man opened his briefcase and took out $30,000. He put it on the table and explained to us that it was for the down payment. 
and he would pay the rest on the settlement date. I was in shock. I couldn't move. I watched with an open mouth as the contract was finalized. What is going on? How can they sell me like this? My parents looked at me with the brightest smiles I have ever seen and said, Good luck! You make sure to be nice to him! To me. I was pushed out of the door by my mom, and she slammed the door behind me, immediately locking it so I couldn't get in. My sister desperately protested till the end, but my father was too strong for her. She couldn't push him aside to get to me. I was finished. I had been sold by my parents. The man put me in the car and started driving. I was still stunned. Before I knew it, we had arrived at the warehouse my sister and I were talking about earlier. I quietly started to prepare myself for the pain and agony that was about to fill my life. But the feeling of hopelessness and despair was suddenly gone. This was because I smelled something so amazing coming from the warehouse. M mushrooms? The warehouse was filled with endless lines of mushrooms. I turned around to look at the man and he awkwardly smiled. We're working on a new brand of mushrooms. Now we're ready to take the next step into mass production. That's why we needed your parents' land. The reason why I picked it was because the flood hazard map showed that it would not get swamped. And I paid money for you to come with me because you looked miserable. And I was sure you'd stay that way if you didn't live with your parents. You're free to go. You should live a happy life from here on. Watching him wipe the sweat off of his forehead brought me back to my senses. I felt surprised and relieved. The anxiety drained out from my body and my legs gave out on me. The man's name was Akio, and he was actually shy and very sweet. He had acted so arrogant at my parents' house so they wouldn't mess with him. I made him a big meal to thank him for saving me, and he seemed genuinely happy. He ate all of it. He stole my heart, and I decided to stay with him to make meals and to help out with his work. We lived in the same house, but he never touched me. Having that sort of respect for me made me like him even more. I... I want to be your real wife! Will you let me? I had poured out my feelings to him a few months later. Akio looked very surprised, but he said, I promise to be good to you. And agreed to my proposal. We became husband and wife. The business was successful, and our brand of mushrooms became popular thanks to the positive reviews posted online. Our life was smooth sailing. I bumped into my parents from time to time, but I chose to ignore them. They didn't try to talk to me either, so we were basically strangers. And so life went on like that for two years. No! Please help me! Kaede? What happened? I got a phone call from my sister. Her voice was shaking. What she told me was horrifying. My parents had used up all the money they received from Akio and were in serious debt again. They told Kaede to earn money by selling her body. She almost got forced into a sketchy car, but she used all her strength to run away. She told me she was hiding by the river. I told Akio everything and we immediately left to pick her up. She must have been in a desperate situation. She wasn't wearing any shoes. We found her on the riverbed, trembling in the snow. Kaede, you're gonna be okay. You can come live with us now. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to get in the way of your happy life with Mr. Akio, but I feel so bad for making you do this. As my sister apologized in tears, I shook my head sideways. My sister did nothing bad. It's my parents' fault. It seems like I wasn't the only one who thought so. After we brought my sister home, Akio suddenly left and disappeared for about two hours. A few days later... What did you say to our neighbors? Tell them it was a big misunderstanding now! My parents had called me for the first time in a while, and they started yelling at me as soon as I picked up. I was confused until Akio started laughing and explained the whole thing to me. After we found my sister and took her home with us, Akio left to go see an influential man living in the area. He told this man everything our parents had done to us. During the contract with my parents, Akio had recorded everything. He played the tape for this man, including my mother's suggestion to trade me for $20,000. The man believed Akio after hearing this tape and decided to take matters into his own hands. He talked to the neighbors who gave my parents rice and vegetables out of pity and relatives who donated money to help my parents live. Nobody was willing to help my mother and father anymore. They looked for jobs since they desperately needed money, but nobody would hire them since rumors spread fast. They tried a self-sufficient life, but my mother fractured some bones and was left in a wheelchair. Since my father was never the healthy type, he got sick too. They had to move into a small retirement home, using all the money they had from receiving pension. The retirement home didn't have any recreation programs, so apparently they spent each day doing nothing. An acquaintance of mine works there and told us that they both barely look alive and they keep calling our names, but we have no intention of meeting them. On the other hand, 
I'm still living the life of my dreams with the love of my life. My sister moved in with us, and she seems content. She's finally in a safe place away from her parents, and she even got married. I hope that I can spend the rest of my life happily with Akio and my sister. We had the worst start, but the prime time of our lives start here. My name is Kyoko Miyagi. I am 23 and I have been working at this company ever since I graduated high school. I decided not to go to university because of a situation my family was in. But I was interested in university to start with so it didn't bother me. Luckily, academic background wasn't important at my office. We all had the chance to be promoted. I tried my best to challenge myself to raise the quality of my work performance and I loved my job. But all of that changed suddenly. The company CEO brought a man in his 40s named Tanabe. Apparently, he was a relative. According to the CEO, Tanabe graduated a famous university and been working overseas until recently. He was appointed our section manager because of his past achievements. But this guy turned out to be just terrible. Hey, Kiko! You're doing a pretty good job over here. Which university did you graduate? I came here straight after high school. What? You didn't go to university? Aren't you embarrassed about only being a high school graduate? I have never felt embarrassed about that. I didn't feel the need to apply to university because it wasn't appealing to me. Wow, you're the proud type, huh? But you know, your parents had no right to raise children if they weren't going to put you through proper education. You're crossing the line, sir. <laughs> I see you had to fill the lack of education with some quick wits. I feel bad for you. You look good. You work good. But you're just a high school graduate. This happened every time we talked. There were a few other employees who didn't go to university, and he looked down on all of us. I was a great target for him since all other female employees had graduated university. He gave me a nickname, Housekeeper. Hey, Housekeeper! Why don't you clean the office? Since you don't have the right to work here, and so I would start cleaning, but then... High school graduates are so inefficient. You only have the brains to clean. Why don't you just quit and actually become a real housekeeper? You want me to hire you? He never missed a day from picking on me. I guess he didn't like me because I had a good work reputation despite being a woman without proper academic background. He wasn't handsome or anything, but all the female employees worked hard to gain his approval since he was a single man in his 40s, and also relative of the CEO. It looked like a bunch of groupies flocking around. Well, a bunch of highly educated groupies. When Tanabe wanted a cup of coffee, they would all stand up to serve him. He would then select his favorite, and the lucky one got to serve him her cup. I couldn't understand what was so great about him. I wondered if the CEO was aware of this strange situation. Ever since Tanabe had come to work with us, the office was filled with academic discrimination, and the female university graduates spent their time buttering him up. All they talked about was golf and where to go drinking after work. It was obvious that the efficiency of our work performance had declined. They took all the interesting projects and left us high school graduates with the mundane duties. He made it seem we should worship him for allowing us to work for him. Many high school graduate employees quit after a while, the CEO finally saw something was up, and he came up to me to ask me some questions. There's been quite a few employees who have asked for approval to resign. I asked them why, and they mentioned something about academic discrimination. You're telling the truth, sir. Ever since manager Tanabe took over, the importance of academic background has been emphasized. We discussed the current situation. According to the CEO, the employees who resigned recently were all highly competent and each had great work performances. Since they were all high school graduates, he was asking the employees with similar academic backgrounds for information. I reported everything that had happened ever since Tanabe had joined the company. Okay, well, Tanabe is my older brother's son. He's my nephew. My brother passed away recently and his wife was the one who asked me to take him in. I see. She told me he had graduated a famous university and had been working overseas until recently. And she showed me his bachelor's degree. The CEO admitted that he had noticed Tanabe's behavior, and something didn't quite add up. He was supposedly working for a rather big company overseas. 
I think he said Europe. But I only speak Japanese, so I haven't been able to confirm it. Sir, do you want me to check it out? Huh? I didn't pick the path to attend university, but I loved learning new languages. I spoke English, German, French, and I also spoke a little bit of Chinese. Wow, I would appreciate that. And so, I contacted the company he claimed to have worked for. As the CEO had suspected, there is no record of him working there. I had found him a little suspicious. He was untrustworthy after all. After the CEO's brother, or Tanabe's father, had passed away, their house was put on sale. Tanabe's mother had to contact the CEO right after the house was sold, and he had been skeptical. After that, the CEO called the corporation lawyer and set a date to have a meeting with Tanabe and his mother. To summarize, Tanabe had graduated a famous university, but he had lied about working in a company overseas. In fact, he had never been employed in his life. He had used the money left by his father to invest in stocks among other things, and had failed miserably. They were so deep in debt that they had to sell their house, and so Tanabe's mother had come up with the idea to ask the CEO to hire him since he was family. I'm not lying about spending time overseas at all. You probably won't understand a word, but I could speak five languages fluently. It was right at that moment that I went into the room to serve some tea. The CEO and I had come up with a plan, and I started talking to Tanabe in different languages. This is basic stuff. You understand this, right? What the heck? You're not making any sense. Tanabe was obviously totally clueless. That was basic conversation in French and Chinese. How did you even survive overseas not being able to understand that? I, uh, I lived on the outskirts of Germany. Du weißt du das? Why don't you shut up? There's no way I can have a proper conversation with uneducated people like you. He spout out as he left, leaving his mom behind. We heard him yelling about the company not being good enough for him as he stomped out. He's my nephew. That's why I helped you out. However, there's no way I can let him stay after finding out he was lying. Please, we still owe a lot of money. We need help. I have a rare disease. I need my dear boy to support me. The dear boy you're referring to is 40 years old. But, but... The company is entitled to demand compensation for the damage he's caused by driving so many employees to resign. We were supposed to be a family. How could you be so unsympathetic? I'm going home. You are just terrible. About that. Do you remember you changed your family name back so that you wouldn't have to pay for the money borrowed under my brother's name? Of course I did. I didn't want to pay that. Then... That means we're not family, right? Please leave immediately. Tanabe's mother fled the room, taken aback by the CEO's sudden strict attitude. After this incident, I was promoted to the CEO's secretary and interpreter. The CEO cut off all ties with Tanabe and his mother. And we don't know what he has been up to, but I have a strong feeling that he hasn't found a new job. I don't think there are many companies that will hire a 40-year-old man that doesn't have any work experience. As for Tanabe's mother, she works at a supermarket nearby. A fellow employee saw her when she went shopping. In the end, I think the mother is to blame for everything that happened. Tanabe probably turned out the way he is because of how he was raised by his mother. But I don't feel sorry for him. Anybody who looks down on others and only favors people who suck up to them doesn't need to be respected. My name is Yumi. Ever since I was a kid, I had gotten picked on for having such an ordinary face that doesn't match my pretty name. Every time... Ayumi might have an ordinary face, but she is sweet and good person! Don't you dare pick on her! Thank you, Saho. My childhood friend, Saho, would protect me. Saho and I grew up together until we graduated university. After school, we both chose different paths, and we worked in different companies. Not having Saho around to protect me naturally made me stronger, and I learned to stand up for myself. I even built up my courage to attend a barbecue party that my colleague invited me to. That's where I first met Sora. Ayumi, the water feels nice. 
You should come in too. Uh, okay. Just a little bit. Wow, it feels so good. How about I take you for a hike sometime? The water up in the mountains is much more clear. Uh, uh, really? And so we gradually became closer and eventually we started dating. We talked about marriage and both of our parents had approved. I was feeling like my life had finally started. One day, we went to my parents' house to have dinner. On our way home, we bumped into Sahel. Ayumi, it's been a while. Who is that? This is Sora. We're getting married soon. Huh? Marriage? I see. Congratulations. Thanks. You better come to the wedding. Of course. I'm looking forward to it. Come to think of it, I think this is the last time I ever smiled at Sahel. The next few months were really busy for Sora and I. We had to choose many things for the wedding, and we looked for a new home. But as the wedding got closer, something seemed to be bothering Sora. I wanted to ask him what was up. I was worried about him. I decided to head towards Sora's house. When I saw him enter a nearby cafe, I moved closer to call to him, but... Huh? Sahel? They looked intimate, and seemed like they were talking about something important. I was too scared to go up to them, so I just turned around and went home. Why were they together? What were they talking about? I was trying to build up my courage to call Sora and ask him, when Saho called me and told me to come to a nearby park. I wanted to tell you that I slept with your boyfriend. I'm really sorry. You're going to have to give up on the wedding. Huh? Y you're kidding, right? Uh, this must be some kind of joke. I'm not lying. Sora is mine now. You want proof? Here, look at this. I looked into her phone, and it showed a picture of Sal and Sora in bed, with only sheets on. Everything went black. As they fell to the ground, I heard Sal say, See ya! As she left me there alone. I called Sora, but he wouldn't pick up. After several tries, he finally picked up to say, I just can't. I don't think I could spend the rest of my life with you. Let's break up. He hung up right after he dumped me. Our breakup talk lasted only a few seconds. I needed to know why. So I called him back. But he had rejected my phone number and the call wouldn't go through. I cried. I don't think I cried as much as I did then. I forced myself to go to work, but I locked myself in my room the moment I got home. I lost 22 pounds for not being able to eat. Six months later, I heard from neighbors that Saho and Sora had gotten married. I didn't want to cry over such scumbags anymore. I focused on working hard to forget about the both of them. My work was my life, and I would go straight home after. A year passed and I was asked to be in charge of a big project. My hard work had paid off. My bosses were proud of me. And I had great team members. I earned a lot of money and I had many trustworthy people around me. At the beginning, I had only worked hard to get over Sora. But at this point, I was feeling really good about myself and about my life. That's when I met Mr. Suzuki. He was the project leader of our business associate. Through our meetings, I began to feel attracted to his honest and eager mindset towards work. He seemed to feel comfortable around me too, and told me that talking to me sparked up new ideas. A year later, we had an after party for the project we had finished. Mr. Suzuki called me over and asked me to date him, and that he was seriously thinking about marriage. He had made me feel safe. I knew he wouldn't throw me away for no reason like Sora did. I said yes, and we started dating. Our love kept growing. A year and a half later, we decided to get married. Both of my parents met each other, and right when we finalized our decision on the wedding venue, my mother came to me. Would it be okay if I call Saho to your wedding? Remember, we were all invited to attend Saho's older brother's wedding. Saho had her wedding overseas, so we weren't invited. But since we were invited once, I just think it's fair to invite their family to yours. That's what she said. I would be lying if I said it didn't bother me. But I figured it was a good chance to let the past go. I never imagined that this decision would cause so much drama. On the day of the big event, I was getting ready before going into the wedding. My dress and makeup was on. All that was left was my hair, and then I would be finished. The makeup artist left for a second, and I was alone in the dressing room. And there was a knock on the door. Hey, hey! I'm here! 
Wow, you look really pretty. I guess fine feathers really do make fine birds. Saw it appeared. Thanks for coming. I'll be ready soon. If you could wait in the lobby with the others. Wait, you're kicking me out? I came to celebrate you. If you kick me out, I'll head straight to the groom to snatch him too. <laughs> just kidding, it's just a joke. Wait, am I making you uncomfortable? Come on, that was ages ago. I felt a sinking feeling in my stomach. Don't worry, I won't take him. Let me tell you a secret. I never actually slept with Sora while you two were dating. Huh? Y you lied to me? I guess I can tell you now that you're getting married too. Sora's face was just so handsome. I needed to have him. The photo I showed you? I made that with Photoshop. I showed another picture I made of you when I told him you were cheating on him. And he totally believed me. After Sora broke up with you, I made sure to be there to comfort him. It was just so easy to make him fall for me. <laughs> she stroked her stomach as she told me her story. She had a baby bump. She was trying to show me she was pregnant. Did she come all the way here to tell me all this? She looked too triumphant. Come to think of it, every time Saho protected me from bullies, her comments would always be somehow insulting towards me. At the time, I didn't notice since I trusted her with my heart. But now I could see how she always had looked down on me. As these thoughts ran through my head, I... I couldn't hold back the urge to laugh. Why are you laughing? You lost against me, you know. Let me tell you straight up. I'm not giving Sora back to you. We're having a baby now and Sora will obviously end up more happy with me. <laughs> it's just that while I was waiting for the makeup artist to come back, I turned my camera on to take a selfie. I made a mistake and hit the video recording button. I showed Saho the phone screen and it showed that it was on video mode. Everything Saho said had been recorded. Her face suddenly lost color. <laughs> what the heck? What do you think you're doing? How about we have a talk about this after the wedding's over, okay? Who do you think you are? How dare you? Give me the phone! We need to erase the video! Just then, everyone who heard the commotion came rushing into the room. My parents, Mr. Suzuki, and even Sora. They saw Saho grabbing onto my dress, and her father immediately pulled her off of me. And then hell broke loose. Well, hell for Saho and her family. Everybody asked why we were fighting. So, I showed them the video of Saho and my conversation. Saho's mother broke down into tears, and her father was fusing. As for Sora, he turned pale. Then he started showering Saho with vulgar words. When the wedding finally happened, I looked around, but Saho and her family had already left. It had caused a huge commotion, so many of the guests already kind of knew what had happened. Many of them were sympathetic and told me to forget about Saho and live happily with Mr. Suzuki. Hearing the words made me feel encouraged and relieved. <laughs> I started tearing up. From what I heard from other people, Sal and Sora got divorced. He lost both her and the baby. It turns out that Sora wasn't the father. That Saho had been having an affair. Saho's family had to pay a lot in compensation to Sora. And they had to sell their house and moved far away. Sora texted me, telling me how sorry he was for believing Saho and accusing me of cheating on him. I sent him a text saying thank you for contacting me and to not worry about it because it's all in the past. I plan to focus only on happy thoughts, which are all about what the future holds for my husband and me. Goodbye, Saho. I hope you find happiness with your parents and your baby. But I hope to never see you again. I'm Hirokazu. I'm a 28-year-old office worker. I've been married for five years now. This is my wife, Minami. She's two years younger than me. I was always away from home for work, so she stayed home and did everything around the house for me. These days, many couples work and do housework together, so I guess we're kind of old school. But things were good between us. I loved her very much. And work was going well. I was a pretty average guy, but I always worked hard and looked after others. And just the other day, I was promoted to section chief. But there were some things I wasn't happy about. I wanted to spend more time with my wife. I was the youngest section chief in the company, so I had a lot of pressure on me. I had to work late almost every day. But since my wife did everything around the house for me, I had to do my part as a provider. 
I worked hard day in and day out. I'm home! Hey there, working late again? Yeah, sorry. No problem, dinner's ready. I'll be in bed. Okay, hey, it was payday today. Was it all there? They pay me for OT, right? Yeah, as always. Okay, good. She managed all the money for me too. I was really grateful for that. Hirakazu, you ready for your business trip next week? Yes, sir. As section chief, I was asked to go on business trips at the last minute. Needless to say, I never said no. I needed to do everything I can to further my career, and my wife was very understanding. Sorry, I gotta go on a business trip again. Oh, okay, for how long? Three days, tops. Uh, okay then. I think I'll go visit my parents or something then. For the promotion, I rarely had business trips, but these days I had one every few weeks, so my wife didn't ask where I was going anymore. She just asked how long I'd be gone. Little did I know, this business trip changed everything between us. Wow, look at the rain. Day two of the business trip. It was pouring out when I woke up. I checked the news online. They were saying a storm was headed our way. The meeting got canceled that day. I was worried, so I turned the TV on. Please evacuate immediately. Oh no. My wife's parents actually lived around the hotel I was staying at. And their place was hit really hard by the rain. They were telling everyone in the area to evacuate. Minami said she was heading back there and her father couldn't walk. Trains were still moving, so I decided to head over to her parents' house to help out. I arrived at the house. The mud from the mountain behind their house was starting to crush their shed. The house was still fine, but they weren't safe here. I rushed to the door. You okay? As soon as I got to the door, my father-in-law stepped out of the house. Urukazu, what are you doing here? I was in town for business and I got worried. Oh, thank you so much. We were getting worried. It's just the two of us, so... Huh? Wait... Meeting me wasn't even here. She's not here? After we got to the evacuation center, I asked her where Minami was. They said they had no idea. She didn't say anything about coming home. I had a bad feeling about this. I called her up. Where are you? Huh? I told you, I'm at my parents' house. Oh uh, yeah? Strange. I'm here too. Uh, uh... I could hear her gasp. Then... Who is it? I heard someone. It was a guy. Hey! Then she hung up on me. After spending the night at the evacuation center, I took her parents back to the hotel I was staying at. Their house was still in danger. I called Beanie Me again. To my surprise, she picked up. So, where are you? Uh, out. I heard him. You were with a guy. He's just a friend. I'm just hanging out. You lied to me. You didn't even call your parents. Why is that, huh? If he's just a friend, why lie to me? You know what? If you don't want to answer, fine. I'll just hire a private investigator and have him look into you. Uh, are you serious? Aren't you overreacting a little? You won't find anything. Fine then, prove it. Turn your camera on and show me where you are. She went silent for a while, then. Uh, I'm on vacation with my boyfriend. She finally cracked. The next day, we all went back to our house. Minami, her parents, and I sat around the table. I told you, I was with my boyfriend. She didn't even sound sorry. Turns out she was seeing some college student. His name was Hiroki. Minami, how could you? You were always working late. I was lonely. You being serious right now? 
you never spend time with me anyways. I got lonely, okay? What's the problem here? I worked hard to provide for her, to make her happy. And this is how she repays me? Hirokazu came to save us from the storm, but you... He's always working. He never pays attention to me. Oh, screw him. Forget it. Let's get a divorce. No problem. But you better pay me what you owe. I get half of everything. I lost all feelings for her. I got started on the paperwork immediately. My wife cheated on me. And we were both in agreement about the divorce. So the proceeding went rather smoothly. Then things got kind of interesting after that. A few weeks later after the divorce. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> please take me back. Please. I didn't say anything to her. Say something. Please. I got no money. I got nowhere to go. Please. She got some money out of the divorce, but it wasn't much. Since she'd used up our money without my permission, it was deducted from her share. She was completely broke. And I was going to sue her for damages, too. So she was pretty much screwed. By the way, her boyfriend ran off like a coward when he found out about all this. He was young, so he probably had all the time in the world. But he didn't care about her. And he couldn't provide for her, either. All these years, I worked so hard to provide for her. But she betrayed me like it was nothing. She did this to herself, so she can rot in hell for all I care.